Okay, the way you're going to create your content for your articles and such in, in the inside part of your magazine is you're going to use a template, a newsletter template from Microsoft Publisher, which you have uh, in your laptops. And the way you get there is you go down to your Start menu, you click on that, and then if you don't see Microsoft Publisher in your list, you click in the search box and you just start typing in Publisher. And there it is, Microsoft Publisher. So you click on that and up it comes. And what we want to do is we want to click on Newsletters. And then this comes up with all these newsletter templates. Now, if I were you, I'd kind of stay away from the Office.com templates because you have to download them to your computer and stuff and it's just, you know, just another step. Stick with the ones that are, that are the installed templates. So you click on one and it comes up and you'll notice that there is one page spread and two page spread and the one page spread or the let's do the two page spread first two page spread you click on that and then you click create and you'll notice that it's just it has a front page and then it has this one page uh, I'm sorry page two and then page three and then this page at the end and so that is the um, the two page spread all right, so now let's go and I'll show you what the uh, one page spread looks like. Newsletters, and we'll go back down to the one we found. And also here, you know, um, you can also change the, the color scheme if you want something a little funkier or whatever, you can change it around um, to, you know, whatever you want. Uh, you can also change the, um, you know, the font scheme and so on. So let's see what the one page spread is. You click on that, you click create, and the one page spread is just, uh, it's just a very linear one, two, three, four page spread this way. Now that's kind of nice. It has some different formatting on the pages. So so um, let's say that we chose the one page spread because we already have it up. All you do is you're going to go through and all the components for the newsletter are already here for you. It's really convenient. So all you have to do is go in and, and enter your content. So you enter your, your newsletter title. Uh, let's say this is the Jerusalem Times and then the newsletter date which is something like AD I don't know 31 <laughs> and then you can change the volume and the issue and all of that um, and then you have your lead story headline oh let's say John's head on a platter <laughs> and so um, then you're gonna uh, maybe that's your your New Testament story that you're gonna tell and you'll notice here that that the um, co different components of the newsletter actually give you some tips about what should go in these different um, components. Like obviously here you put a picture, but it tells you, oh, why don't you also put a, gr a caption describing the picture. Now you'll notice that here it says this story can fit 175 to 225 words. Well, I know that some of your writing needs to be 300 words, so you'll probably write your article and then over here you'll have to put something like continued on page two. Or Okay, the other thing you want to do is you want to be sure to put in, you know, your table of contents here, blah, 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 and what page it's on. You just um, enter all that information in here. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that it, it uh, tells you to put some quotes here from the stories. But I know that you have to have a quote from Jesus, so you could put one of his quotes in one of these little text boxes. So that's basically how you create the content of your uh, magazine. And um, when you are all done with this, oh, up here, by the way, it says business name. Um, you could put something else in here, or you could just delete it. Maybe you want to put like the price of the magazine, you know, five shekels or something, or you can just highlight it and delete it. Now, when you are done with your magazine, and I mean all done, you've proofread it, you've spell checked it, you've done all of that good stuff, um, then you want to save it. And you go up here to File, and you want to save it as Adobe PDF. Now, once you save it as an Adobe PDF, you cannot go in and edit it. So you want to be sure that you're all done before you save it as Adobe PDF. So you click on that, and I'm gonna save it to my desktop, and I am going to call it uh, Benning, and then you click Save. Now I know it says Save as File Type here, but just go ahead and click Save, and it'll save it as a PDF. So you click Save, see how it changed it? And then you click Save again, and it's converting it into a PDF. PDF means portable document file, by the way, in case you were wondering something interesting as we are waiting for it to convert it to a PDF. 
Okay, so there is your document saved as a PDF and it should be saved on your desktop. And now you can just click and it's on your desktop. And if you need help with what you're supposed to do next, you can watch the next tutorial or ask me, Mrs. Benning, for help.